uh, the other Dylan here that I haven't seen the name yet. And Danny, I don't know either, but thanks for coming over. Uh, so we're gonna do, usually what we do in the warm up, so we're gonna do a class, normal class, and then at the end, I'm gonna be open for questions. If you guys have any questions about the book too, I'm actually doing that with my students. Okay, so we like doing some techniques and then we talk about chapters of the book. Uh, just to have to give you guys something else to, to think about, okay? And you guys are readers, you guys are the best guys to uh, ask questions, I guess, you know? And so if you want to do a little bit of the warm up, do the warm up. I know like uh, Michael look very comfortable in his chair there, so I don't know if we're going to do it. So you get, get, get to watch Michael, I guess. And then you can ask questions afterwards, okay? Uh, so the warm up is going to be based on gymnastics natural. So I don't know if some of you guys know about it, some guys don't. I kind of kind of do. Uh, I did with people in New Zealand. I might do some new techniques position right now and to warm up. It's gonna be a light, but at the same time you're gonna move a little, and then you guys show you guys uh, some of the techniques we'll be working on, and then we are open to questions. Okay, so let's get started. And if you guys have all, all of you guys have a dummy, is you're gonna be even better. Okay. So what, what, I'm on the camera right now? Perfect. All right. Okay. All right, guys. So let's just put the leg back here. Again, we're going to stretch out here. Okay. So leg straight, elbow on the ground, relax your head. Switch side. We're going to do five seconds of each thing. Okay, so, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, leg straight. Inhale up, exhale, grab your toe, grab your feet, uh, toes. Inhale, open your chest, through your mouth. Exhale, relax. Inhale, open your chest, exhale. Okay, now we're gonna exhale, we're gonna stay there. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale. Now, head on the ground, we're gonna throw both legs. Straight back, here, chin on the ground, relax the body. Bring the leg to the same side. Here, shake it up over here. Now we're gonna switch side to the other side. Over here. Come back. Five. Now, hand on the ground. Bend your legs. Bend your legs. We're going to do the same stance here to get ready to do some moves. So, put your hand on the ground here. Lift your legs and switch to the other side. Okay, hand on the ground. Lift the legs. Switch to the other side. Okay, two. Three. Four. Cinco. Six. All right, again, relax up back, walk, spin over the other side. Okay, and again, spin over the other side. Now, hand on the ground, feel like to the side this way. Okay, once again, switch. Boom, push, push, flat. Fish. Boom. Stretch out here. One more time. Put leg straight. Good side. Now, hands forward. We're going to switch stance like this. One, two. Okay. So bring your knee. Right back to all the knees. The exercise of mobility of your hips. Okay? Kind of stretch a little, move your hips. Four. Four. One more. Okay. So look at this one here. So you're gonna put your weight in your hands, 
you're gonna switch, and then you're gonna sit. Okay? So when you switch, you soften the fall with your feet. Don't fall on your butt. Boom. Uh, like a cat. Here you go. Alright? Okay. Oh, two. Let's go three times a side. Go six five throws. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. I actually do one more. <laughs> Go to the back. Chin on the ground, relax. Hand under your shoulder. Open your legs. Okay, now we're going to push yourself back. Now from here, first you're going to stretch. Then you're going to move forward. Slow. Push. Touch your chest on the ground. Now we're going to push yourself back really quick. You walk your hands. All right, a little exercise of shape, uh, flexibility, and speed. Quick. Push. Hey. Wow. One more. Finish. Now, right hand on the ground, left leg goes and hit this leg. Okay? Walk one, two, like a crab walk here. Walk back, one, two. Now, one step over here. Okay? Now, we're gonna switch sides. Boom, boom, walk. One, two, one, two. When you jump, you cannot be heavy, it's so up. Light, hand on the ground. Walk. One, two, one, two. Then pop, and control the way. Walk. One, two, one, two. Shh. All right, now to the side. A little flat here, so go. Shh. One, two. Good, back. One, two, four, one, two. Now, I'm shape. I'm back. I'm shape. Hands on the ground. Back. And then walk forward. And then connect here. One. All right, good. Now we're gonna sit like you're gonna do a butterfly. So sitting here, this will loose up your hip. Boom, good. Sage, quiet. Sink, sage. Lay down. Now we're gonna go from here. Kick. Butterfly again. Go back. Other side. Let's do it. When you kick, I want to push this leg here. Okay? So you don't rock your back. You just push your legs forward. Okay, come back. And breathe. All right, now to the side. Finish. Five, ten, six, back. Now here, straight. And keep your legs straight. Go back. Straight. Catch it up. I want to do some sit-ups, some movements, some movement as well. All right, stay sideways. Now 
And be here, cross the legs 10 times. Just reach out. Okay, so for um, dois, três, quatro, cinco, seis, sete, oito, nove, dez. Now we're gonna switch side. Using your body. Um, this side. Cross your legs all the way. So if you're here, cross all the way. Okay, 10 more. Um, dois, três, quatro, cinco, seis, sete, oito, nove, dez. Switch side. You just keep your hands up in the air. Switch your legs. Um, dois, três, quatro, cinco, seis, sete, oito, nove, dez. Switch. Almost over. Switch again. Um, dois, três, quatro, cinco, seis, sete, oito, nove, dez. Now look, we're gonna still gonna sit up. We're gonna make it burn a little more. We're gonna do it close here like you're gonna stretch, okay? And you're gonna just go here. Knees your chest, 10 times. Okay, so, um, dois, três, quatro, cinco, seis, sete, oito, nove, dez, switch. Um, dois, três, quatro, cinco, seis, sete, oito, nove, dez, grab your knees. Relax your head, a couple deep breaths. Now I gotta sit this way, we're gonna go like this. So when you go, you're already sitting this way. Alright? So let's do this. We're gonna go back, sit. Switch sides of the touch. And then sit back here. Boom. There you go. It's gonna keep working your ass. Nice. Back. Okay. Back. One more. Wow. Good job. Now just to relax your body. Same position here. So you're gonna you're gonna be pointing this way. You're gonna rotate and then go back to the side. So same position. You're gonna switch side by. Oh, move, your, move your arm. Okay. So bring this arm this way. All right. So let's go forward. Bring it down. Grab your knees a little bit. Relax. Sit up, shut it up. Now I'm gonna throw legs all the way up. Hold. Drop over your head. Slow it down. Stop right here. Okay. Now, just move your knees to your elbow. One knee at the elbow at a time. Um, dois, três, quatro, cinco, seis, sete, oito, nove, dez. Sit up. Front your legs. Deep breath. Go through to your mouth. Your nose. 
exhale through your mouth. One more, through your belly, okay? So guys have been doing this, so just uh, inhale through your belly. Exhale through the belly. All right, cool. All right, so we got a little warmed up. Let's get into the techniques, okay? So we, I wanna work with variations of, we, we did a couple of things of the mouth, mouth position. Yeah. And today, that class before, I, I was showing like a baseball choke reverse. I want to see the screenshot of the homework for your kids. Uh, hold on a second, yes. It's a problem with desktop uh, right there. Let's see here, here, here. Okay. Yeah, put the wrong one. All right, so let's talk, we'll go back again and review. I'm gonna review the, since we have people from, let me review a couple of ideas of mounting people, okay? And this, I'm gonna show you the Americana, the way I like to do it. I'm gonna show a little bit of the choke, and I'm gonna show a little bit of the sitting, uh, the, 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 the S mount, or people call Z mount, whatever, but with putting, sitting on the guy's rib and doing the right, right way like this. You know, I see other day people like, oh, go here, and then the guy sat back. So, yeah, like a, a famous black belt, you know? So, okay, well, the guy sat back, my opinion was, in a, was a mistake. So, I'm gonna talk about that, okay? I'm gonna talk about, um, you know, angles, you know? So, pretty much now we're gonna find angles in, in weight distribution. Okay, we, before we talk about a little bit about side control and stuff like that. So, and then after that, be open for questions. Okay, so one thing, let's go. We're gonna start with the Americana, all right, because a lot of people uh, don't get Americana. Okay, Americana is probably one of the easiest moves to get when you mount. And I'm gonna explain, uh, well, I'm already explaining. So, basically, the idea, okay, so my idea when, when my idea of mount is this. I wanna mount, I use the mount to control somebody, okay? And longer I keep the mount, the longer I keep the mount, the longer I'm controlled, okay? So every move that end up, end up taking me out of the mount is a move that I discard a little bit. So we say, oh, but arm bars, you're not gonna get arm bars. Well, I will. But there are ways to get arm bar without getting out of the mouth. You know, because the, the traditional arm bar, you basically sit on the ground and then you go for the arm bar. But it's a lot of times you guys already know, like you got the guy, the guy's really strong, you know, pull the arm, and then you end up, he end up finding his way up. And now what happened? Now you were on top in the best control of all controls. And because you try to go for submission, you exchange it your control for the submission, you end up losing both, okay? So I don't like this kind of exchange, you know? So everything that's involved exchanging that is something that I try to avoid, okay? Unless the guy like got me off, his arm is already there, and I think, man, I have it, the arm is so much there that now I have no way I cannot get it. Then you, you know, you can get the arm, okay? But before that, I'm gonna come up, you know, try to think about a way to get the guy right then and there, okay? So one of the ways is the choke, another way is the American, another way is the mouth we're gonna work right now. So there's three ways of keeping the mouth while you try to get a submission, okay? It should be a good uh, headline, three ways to keep the mouth. All right, so first, before we can do the setup of the Americana, let's, we're gonna do from the back, from the end to the, to the beginning, okay? So, the end of the American to already have when I already have I cannot just do American like this and this and my body my both knees are here that's never gonna work my body has to move okay so when you do American somebody I'm gonna do it on both sides 
you 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 will kind of like this. Your leg is up. Your other knee is down. Okay. You don't need to step. You're not doing step. It's not about uh, putting my weight here. It's about keeping my leg pushing, my heel pushing against him, but lift my knee enough so the, this side can go down. Okay? I'm going to show what happens the other side too. Now, the other thing is this. I'm not putting my weight on my body. I'm not putting my chest on him. Okay? I'm putting my weight on my elbow. And why? Because if, if, if he bridge, bridge. See? I, I'm, I move, but I didn't lose my position here. Okay, because my weight is here, so you can bridge up. Bridge more, bridge like ah, See, less weight you put in your partner, less you're gonna move. Why in America a lot of times? People get it, here, oh, I'm gonna get it, get boom! And then you have to reposition yourself. And then you lose everything, okay? So you gotta give the guy some room. That's why you plank. So when you do this, you plank your elbow on the ground. It's like I'm doing this. Look. Here. Okay. I don't care if I'm going to touch him or not. It's going to depend how, you know, tall his body, how high his body is going to be. You know, of course, guys like this big, I have to touch it, right? But if the guy's here, I'm going to try, try to lean on my elbow. Because if I put too much weight on him, when he moved, I moved. So that's one thing. Two is this. All the legs, see, when I did this, this leg slightly turn in. Not here, so down, I push my knee slightly, and I open my foot. So I kind of have base. I'm not just like this, because here I don't have base. Put the toes on the ground, and in case he breaks his waist, my toes are going to stop me. Okay? So it's important, you put your knee in, open your feet a little bit, and put your toes on the ground, so that creates like a, like a break. When the guy do that, it breaks, okay? So let's just go from, let's start from the end, and then I set this up. So here, you gotta get your dummy, whatever you have there, okay? Elbow on the ground, I'm gonna lock, adjust the position. Now look, I'm gonna be really centered with you guys. Down, down. Look at my hip. I'm not turning my hip, like this, a lot of times you know, say, do this, and the guy go, boom, the hip go all the way outside. Now my hip still close to his body, on top. So here and here. Now, let him do whatever he wants. Okay. If I put more weight, see, oh, he, if I put more weight, he breaks. Oh, he makes me move. Okay. One of the skates of the Americana is pushing your, the guy's armpit here. I push my armpit in bridge. That's why I have to be heavy. Push my armpit. Understand? If you put weight in your arm, like a plank, when you push your ar 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 armpit, you're not going to get the skate. Like when I, people get me an Americana, I see they're doing wrong. I put my hand in the armpit, they boom, push. Okay, so that's the thing. Let me see you guys do a little bit. And you're gonna re-engineer this back. Of course, re-engineer has to be back. All right, you gonna get some? Let me see. Man, I got some. Valeu. Cool. No more sun on the face, man. Oh, I'm still sun on the face. All right. Well, Danny, where are you from, Danny? Danny Stinson. Not hearing me. Can you guys hear me? All right. Hold on. Where are you from, man? Danny, where are you from? All right, let me see. All right, butt too much, too much movement on the butt. Oh, right, guys, I still see you guys turn your butt too much. Is this slightly? Oh, right, look, Matt too. Oh, right, look, I'm gonna do my dummy, okay? Wow. 
is not here too much. It's like almost like somebody got me in the same position and just turned me right here a little bit without shifting me to the side too much. Okay? So uh, I still want to be centered here. If I, if I start to lean this way, this is only the end. At the end, I go, whoa. Okay? I think it doesn't, you know, if you think it a little bit, it doesn't matter, but it matters. All right. Okay. Good. So, good. All right. So, what is important about this? One, plank on the elbow. Doesn't matter the weight on your body now. The weight is on your elbow because your elbow is this person, the person's skate. If you put weight on the skate, carve him to skate. Two, if you put weight on your partner, when he moves, he moves. So you don't wanna, you on the mouth, you're putting weight on him, but this time you try to give him a little bit of slack. So when he moves, you have a little space. So he can move it down, so that's important too. And the third thing is your body cannot shift too much, otherwise you start losing balance to the other side. So those three things are important, okay? Now, uh, setup. A setup from this position can be the setup from, the same setup from the, the choke, okay? So another thing we talk about, even when I went to New Zealand, I show that, and then uh, show a lot of times, it's like when you want to attack on the mount position, you have to, so every move you make is already thinking about what the guy's gonna do to you, okay? Because it's like mounting a bull, right? If you're not worried about the balance, the bull's just gonna throw you away. So balance is the most important there. And so where I'm gonna be thrown away is the most important part. So where, I gonna, where this bull, right, is gonna throw me next, all right? So that's how my body has to be always congruent. Sometimes people do what? They, they shift the look to the left, but his body is go to the right, and then the guy, boom, bridge, and you lose completely your balance. You're not ready for it, okay? So here is a perfect example. And of course, when you have a human being as a partner, he can always give you a feedback, right? So. For anything, for anything. See, uh, I know there's people that like to do the high mount. I used to like this too, and look, I like these arms are bridge. I got it. I can be here. The, the, what is the problem of the high mount? There's no problem with that. The only problem is a good guy is not going to allow you to do it. I've never let you get a high mount with me, never, ever, ever, because they're going to block you here. Okay, so if the guy block your hip, you cannot do the high mount. As a matter of fact, you cannot do arm bars, you cannot do that, anything, okay? So with the guy with a good defense, I have to be able to do, I get him the same way I get everybody. So why am I gonna do something that here works with a lot of people, but doesn't work with everybody? Then I get good, at, I get, I, I'm gonna get really good at doing something that works with a lot of people, but not with everybody. Then when I get to this guy that doesn't work with, what are we gonna do next, all right? So I prefer to work with things that work against everybody, doesn't matter how good the guy is, okay? So the principle is here. I never wanna be flat. What I mean by flat is straight up. Well, what happened here? If you bridge that way, well, you bridge this way, well, so I'm like in the, on top of the ball. I don't know what's gonna happen. I can put my hand on the ground, that's gonna help, but then my hands are gonna be busy. So basically, I have to know, I gotta give him a situation that I know where he's gonna take. This way, I'm already prepared, right? So how do I do this? By shifting my hip. Oh, so how do I shift my hip? Oh, so if I'm here, it's like moving one knee forward and one knee back, like almost like locking my leg on my part, like somebody got my head and twist me like a cat, okay? And then, boom, I hear, okay? Now what happened here? 
He can bridge me that way, right? I put my hand on the ground, and I can use my hand here, bridge, okay? Bridge the other way. So, I got really strong on one side. Notice that if it goes this way, which is the side I have the knee forward, I'm really strong because my weight is going like that. So if it bridges this way, it's going to bridge against my weight. My weight is going there. So now I know. I need to know, oh, where are you going to go? I know the only place he can take me is here. So now you can predict. I put my hand here. And now when he take me to here, go ahead. Uh, my hand keeps me there. And I can switch hands as, I, as I'm attacking him. Okay? And if you go the other side, I don't need to worry about it because my weight is there and my knee is right here. Understood? That's very important. But this comes everything, okay? By just mouth switch. I can switch any side. I usually switch to this side. So that's a, I'm a single side on this one. So, okay, boom, got the mouth. Now, one hand, always aware of my base, okay? And the other hand is the one that's gonna attack me. So, for example, if you go that way, boom. I put the hand here, and it's gonna choke. Just by putting my hand here, and put my other hand on the ground, now when it comes that way, I put my weight on him, he's, he's in a choking position. One hand choke. Can I use the other hand? Yes, I can the other hand. But I can do the choke anytime. I'm here, far to go, but Now, the guy, sometimes the guy wrap my arm here, right? So instead, now I have this hand as a base, and this is the one that's gonna pack. Understand? You can even do both. Attack both. But now look. Now this is the base. So if you bridge that way. See? So this is the one that keeps me down. And this is the one that I'm walking over here. So I can get the American. All right? So I always keep one hand to stay on the ground and one hand to attack. Why do I do this? Once again, I don't want to have any surprise if i have no hands on the ground i'm gonna go whatever here you bridge really hard and then i move a lot i lose everything once again it's all about control okay so you want to have your control how do you do control i rather lose my americana than lose the mouth so going there is risky but if i'm here and the guy you know fight with my arm or for some reason put the elbow down it's okay i'm here now i'll go back to the neck you walk on the neck I go back to american Okay, so I, you know that's one of the double attacks you guys do a combination. Okay, neck, arm. There's arm bars and chokes, americana and chokes. So today we want americana and choke. So let's go to americana. How do I get? He's never gonna give it easy. Okay. Uh, do I shift my hips? Okay, I'm gonna unmute you, Mac. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh, do you do you uh, shift your legs one up, one down every time you get to the mount, or just some? Every time. Every time. If well, when you read, if you read my book, what did I say? There's a part, part that I say, look, why I pick a side? Because if I'm here, let's go physics right here. So I'm pretty much 50-50. Okay, and if my 50 50 and I have, for example, if I'm at 300 pounds, I have 150 pounds on each side, that's not bad. Hmm. I can make any kinds of mistake here, no problem. But when you're light, you don't have this uh, privilege. Understand? So, how can I make myself heavier on one side and lighter on the other side? Because I have to be lighter on one side. And what is the light side? It's the side that you want your partner to kind of go to. It's the side that you have a, a sign there. Come here, free food, you know, like buffet. Come over here, have like sign, you know. You want them to go there. The other side, you put alligators and, you know, block the door, gates, and bombs, and minefields, all right? So I'm here, same thing, I pick the side. So the moment I mount somebody, I go, boom, I'm here. Because now I know my sequence. Like, when you box somebody, have you ever seen people box like this? You know, they're going to get one round in the face. You already have, okay, 
This side is here. This is my strong side. Everything that comes here, but I'm already in a group. Jiu-Jitsu is the same idea. Understand? Martial arts are always, they, they repeat itself. Okay? So, boom. Already the same thing. I have my stance. Now I'm going to attack. You see? So, how do I attack this? Also, when you put your hands, you're basically creating a triangle. Okay? So, that's important. You're not just putting my hand here. This is not good. It looks good, but it's not good. I have to push this hand all the way to my shoulder, all the way to my butt. So it goes up and down, uh, like this. Now lift. See? Now I'm gonna just relax. Lift. Uh, now lift again. It's like, boom. Like, you know, try to put a cat in the bucket of water. Not that I have a try, right? But that's how it works. Okay? So, you know, no ideas, Reese. Don't do that, okay? So put your hand here. And push yourself backwards, like you're gonna sit your butt on the heel. This butt from this arm, from here. If I'm gonna do the other, same thing. Okay, very important. People, because it's visual, looks like I'm doing, have no energy here. Okay, this is wrong. Right now, it's wrong. Just because I'm not shift, look, look my butt here. Boom. Oh, every time I sit, I just see this going down. Yes. Got it? So, shift, have something like that. Now, usually I go for Americana when the guy is holding my arm. And what happens? When I mouth from uh, cross face, right? You mouth from cross face, you hit here, boom, and you're already here. So I pick a side. Now I put both my hands on one side. This knee here, high as I can. Doesn't matter if it's blocking my hip or not. Now I go. See, I start to lie here and thumb up and to the point that I actually gonna put shoulder over, okay? Why? Because that's gonna aggravate, move back a little bit. That's gonna aggravate his arm. So I'm kind of walking here. What? See my, how my body's already turning? I already turned my body like I already had. Now, put down the arm, right? That way, right, right. right. So here, uh, bridge. Move, right, let's go, anywhere, more. Uh, keep your breath now, a little bit more, and then you deliver. Uh. Okay, you take your time and deliver the arm with this shoulder to the other hand that's already there. Okay, so again, first step. Turn sideways. Once I'm already under here, what do I do? I turn my body already. Because now, he cannot go down the side without the arm, okay? He tried to go, sometimes he tried to grab my foot and lift the other one. So, just stay here, make sure you don't give this away and work from this side. So now what do you do? Go up, go up. Or, see now, all the way here, stop. Now. Shoulder, I'm gonna pass my elbow and do this. And you lock. This again, five. Okay? So with this guy, a little so switch, hand here, pop, 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 shoulder, go here. Let me see. Tu tem água? Não. Não pode ser. What's going on there, Michael? You can talk to me now. You're on mute. <laughs> Where are you from? Uh, New York, sir. All right. So you're like captivity right now. Definitely. Afraid yeah. to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so that's like, uh, what, it's like 10 o'clock there, huh? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. uh, oh, thank you for coming. My pleasure. Uh, Danny, where you from? Oh, uh, again, I was trying to talk to you, Danny. Where are you from, Danny? Uh, Australia. Australia, man. So Australia now is 1, no, what time is it, 10.30? So, uh, it's just coming up to 12 o'clock, nearly lunchtime. Whoa. All right, man, thank you for coming. 
No, thank you. Ah. And thank you for buying the book, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. I love that. Like, you didn't make too much, you know, you didn't make rich, but, you know, but you help. <laughs> no, I love it. Right. It was fantastic. Let me know. Let me know if you guys have any, any uh, questions over there uh, with this. Okay? It's, bro, it's a simple thing as the Americana. But if you're not getting the Americana a lot, it's because you're making a mistake. And the mistake is within one of the, not doing one of those steps of, of this drill. Understand? And I want you guys to understand the step by step why you're doing that. Not like, oh, Americana, go here. You know, no, there's like a, the American alone, there's a lot into it. You know, just American. The position, the mobility, the distribution of the weight. Okay. So, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Okay. You can chat here. You can send me a chat. I'm going to keep on going. Okay. All right. Seems like everybody good. You good there? You good there, Matt? All right. Yeah. All right. At the very end, Carlito, oh, Carlito. Very end, got to switch. Okay, I got Robert right there. Robert is kind of in the dark, man. Mia, Reese. Okay. So. Did you test Reese yesterday? Oh, you didn't test you, Reese. Did Reese, did you come yesterday? Oh, anyways, I should have did. Okay, so let's move on to the the idea of the choke, okay? So the choke from the same situation. You can even talk about the mount as well. Actually, let, let's move to the mount first and then talk the choke. The mount is easier, okay? So the mount now, the, the arm bar, sorry, my bad. Uh, so let's go arm bar. Mute uh, you, Danny. All right, bar mute now. So. Mais uma amassadinha. <risos> Hoje está aqui para sofrer. Aula internacional. Hoje temos estrada. Olá. So, if you get your leg right here. Okay, a lot of times while I'm working on the neck here, okay, I walk here, the guy gives me the chance to adjust and sit down this way, okay, and then there's people that teach me on, basically what I, when I do this is this, I'm already forward one of my knees, so my knees are already forward over there. You know, the guy's good is not going to let me go beyond this, but when I start going to the neck here, you know, he forget about it. Sometimes he put the hand here. That's a good time to step and adjust. Okay? So, he can come from a neck attack. The neck attack, right now, the, the jab. Let's, let's say the neck is a jab, right? The neck attack that I want you guys to focus is this. Chopping. So my hand got to go up on the neck. In here, I don't care where. I'm not going to put my thumb in the collar. What I need to grab is close to this, like, almost like going to grab the back of his uh, trapezio here, okay? So I just grab here. Now, if you come this way, come this way. All right. So what I do, I'm here. I start to lean on the neck. When I start leaning on the neck, he, most guys are going to start to, Go over here, get worried about it now. So here, bah, bah. that's a good chance to throw your leg from here to here. Now, you adjust. You adjust your body. Okay, so I say adjust this. You throw the leg, you gain this position here, and then this one is already closed. Now I gotta do is kind of like scoot to the side until it touches over here. Okay? Now look. Now, you're not gonna sit down. Look, this, this doesn't exist for us. Now, the moment I get here, I, I lost my battle of 
weight. I have no problem with the weight of my legs. I don't know if you saw my legs, but man, there's not a lot of weight there. All right? So now is I have my weight pulling over here. No good. I want to keep my weight at the whole time of this guy. The more I can apply weight, yeah, the better. The more I apply weight, the better. So I got here. So again, pick a side, attack. Now I start to what? Pull weight on. So what I do from here, I just shift a little bit my head from here to here. Not much of like, I don't do this with my arm. Just I put my arm straight and I lean on another, guess what? Another plank, okay? Chokes from the top, there's a lot to do with planks. Why? Because mm -hmm. I don't need to pull the guy's neck. I just need to put my weight on. What is the best way to put a weight on? When you stiff everything, there you go. If I relax, my body's gonna go like this. And there's no weight when my body's loose. So everything is loose, but this side here is frame. Oh, see? So here, oh, oh just frame this whole part. This whole part is stiff, <laughs> pressure the neck. Now, boom, adjust. Okay? Now how can I go the arm? We're gonna go easy here, first one. One, two, here. I'm still here. And I'm sitting on his rib, okay? But now I'm gonna give you guys a more, a more painful way for him, not for me, <laughs> okay? So when I get to this position, so you, you're fine. He's, he's gonna block his arm. He is like, he's waiting for you to go for it, right? He's like, what else are you gonna do? I'm in the position. When he goes, they're going to escape. So first, you're going to lock your hand here, right? You're going to become like a, like a bag. So once I lock my hand here, he's locked up to me. The more he pulls his arm down, the more he forced me to sit on his rib. Understand? So he's basically sab uh, sabotaging himself. If I feel my butt's off the rib, bad. i got to be sitting. So when you adjust, what I, what I mean is adjusting is this turn. And I just a butt cheek, a butt cheek had to be around the rib cage. So oh, it goes when he's there. Okay? So you adjust that. Then you go here. Now, this is good. I can be forcing here. This is good. And eventually, I'm going to use my leg and push back. And I got to get there, right? But what is even better if you can reach out the belt? Okay? So here is a, a, be a low key position. Low key, grab your own hand, grab your own leg. Put the weight here. Now look, hand here, and you go 45 degrees. You don't go this way. I'm light. What you're gonna do is this. You're gonna put more weight on your butt cheek on you know, my right side. That's it. More weight, more weight, more weight. Bring the leg here. Start to push back. Hip forward. Bar, arm bar. Now, give another break here. Now extra weight. Grab the own bell. Like pump up. Hold the belt. The moment you hold the belt, man, now you're like going deep into this guy rib. Now, when I go here, boom, that's it. Okay? You're kind of pulling the belt. Now it's really like you're pulling yourself down so much that the pressure on the ribs are hard to hold. I know your dummy's not gonna complain, but <laughs> who has not a dummy right there? They know. All right, so let's go. So let's start from the beginning. There you go. And make sure I do the, the belt grab, grab too, Matt. The, the, belt, the belt grab. So go there, step. Remember, side, you're sideways. Oh. And if your left, no, if you, when I say by belt grab, your left hand goes under the arm, over your thigh. No, 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 not there, not there. Over the, over the arm, under the arm, over your thigh, and grab the belt, palm up. There you go. That belt, yeah. And you go back to, this, to, this, to school and they do that and ask the guy how much pain he's feeling.
All right. Carlito knows it. Carlito grabbed it. Now, palm up, Carlito. Palm up. Palm up facing the, 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 the sky, the ceiling. Palm up. When you grab the belt, palm up. And you grab the belt. Not palm down. Because palm up, what happened? The belt is above your hand. So now it's even more pull. If you go up, no. You want to put the, even the weight of the belt on your hand. That's the key because what is the weight of the belt? It is the guy's weight because it's attached to him. So that was attached to you. Understand? So you need that belt on top of your hand, not below. All right. Good job. Good job, Matt. Now, uh, Javier, more sideways, more sideways, yeah. Try to twist. I imagine somebody's twisting your head, go more sideways, yeah. You calibrate by like, somebody grab my head and twist, go, boom, boom, boom. You know, but just somebody, like circling, without change too much the, 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 your leg position. Because your hip move, you move. All right, good job, guys. So let's, Open for questions. Uh, if you don't have any questions, I'll talk a little bit about some, some things of the book. But if you have any questions, let me know or anything or any of those moves, anything related. We're going to open the mic to every, uh, for everybody. And, oh, man, there's people that I didn't, I didn't admit. Yeah. Man, you guys were out. Sorry. Sorry. Nate, my assistant didn't allow you in today. All right. Uh, sleeping. Sleeping in the job. <laughs> All right, guys. Any questions? No? You guys are all master in jiu-jitsu. <laughs> uh, all right, so let me see if I can get something. No, Mike, Mike, no question, Michael, from New York. Oh, oh man, you're thinking, you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it. I can see the tremendous amount of pressure uh, from the mount you put on your opponent there. Yeah, yeah. You saw his face? I, I, I gave him an extra $20 so he can fake the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a lot of pressure. I it said, hurts. fake the pressure. <laughs> uh, well, you know, remember this, the, they talk about the two pressures, right? The, the, the weight pressure and the speed pressure, right? For me, I consider those two pressures that the only two you use in Jiu-Jitsu. And, you know, obviously when you're on top, the weight pressure is the, is the best, right? Because you're on top. That's why I like today. I used to like to be on the bottom a lot my whole youth, you know, all the way, purple belt, brown belt, black belt. When I became a black belt uh, close to my 40s, I was, okay, now I have to work more on the top position because for a couple of reasons. One, you know, it's easier on your body, you know, because you're not taking the guy's weight and have to respond and push and bang. You know, after, uh, if, if you start training with a lot of guys, you know how to put weight. Yeah. You know, like, I train, like, you know, like Saulo Ribeiro, Shandy Ribeiro, guys that are, like, professional and like, putting weight. So, I find the hardest to be on top of those guys, any people, because, you know, it's easier on the body. So, and then you realize, okay, now that I'm on top, how can I use my advantage, advantage of being on top, you know, and use my weight? I, I, I like to say sometimes like gravity is your best friend right so when i'm on top gravity is my best friend when i'm on the bottom gravity is my worst enemy you know so i rather have gravity on my side so so everything that you won't talk and then you try to figure out okay how am i heavy enough am i putting my weight that i really 
close to the partner and really bothering him. And how do you know it bothers? Sometimes people don't, they play poker face, right? They're like, ah. but you know when they will do what? He reacts. So how do you react? You start putting pressure on top and the guy kind of, eh, when they try to push you away, that means you got too close. And that is a good thing. So people say, oh, the guy pushed me away is a bad thing. No, that means you got too close. Now you bother him. He wasn't, they have to open his face. So what I got to do? Figure it out. What is my next angle that I can get too close again? And then my next angle to get too close again. And the next angle to get too close. And what I wanted to usually do is get the guy to push me as much as possible because you know there's a point that by pushing me up and getting out of my pressure here and there he starts to guess out and then whoever gets out first win and loses you know so how can you guess out that somebody that you don't know they have more stamina than you you know so you gotta make them work harder i remember one time uh Hoyler basically told me this. I never was gonna forget. So actually, I was a dad in one class with him, and he somebody asked like, Hoyler, what do you do to go against big guys?" And he's like a smaller guy. I'm a big guy for Hoyler, you know, like he's like 147, 48 pounds. Uh, and he said, "Well, first I have to transform them, bring them to my size." And then some people, hmm, what, what did this mean, you know? And I understood. Because he brought the guy to his size of, you know, he, he wear the guy out. So now the guy's not as strong as he looks, you know, a lot. He got, you know, he got weakened. He weakened the guy. And once he, the guy becomes weak, weaker than him, now he starts to play. Now he's like, now he's dominating the fight. So that's one of the strategies of Jiu-Jitsu, you know. And then we talk about pressure there. That's why I'm connecting this whole thing. Because the consistent pressure, even if I lose – some of the positions of the mouth, for example, right? But if I keep them out, I keep bugging the guy, bugging the guy. I actually develop a way that when I lose the mouth, I, re I retreat and I go right back to the mouth, you know? And that helped my mouth a lot because I don't lose the mouth by going flip on the bottom. When I lose my mouth, I always, if I lose, you know, 95% of the times I don't, if I lose, I retreat. And then I try to retreat in a position that's prepared to come back there quick, you know? And once I got that, you know, I was doing, okay, I lost a couple miles, and I was able to do what? I was able to try different things because uh, I was able to miss and retreat and come back and try again, you know? Sometimes you miss because, you know, you, you get too greedy. Like, for example, the arm bar, right? No, the arm bar, the choke. You hear, instead of putting weight, you start to cross your arm, uh, and you skip the whole body guy, boom, you forget about your weight, and then the guy kicks you out. Mistake. And then, if you catch your balance back, you regroup. Um, so, and if you put a lot of pressure on your mouth, a lot of pressure, eventually the guy just give man, you know, just get it. You know, just get this thing, and you hold this for me, and get over it. Okay, and that should be the idea of any situation: side control, knee on the belly, guard pass. You know, guard pass. You gotta you gotta use the weight right. It's like if you if you just never. I, I remember. I, I'm not gonna say names. I, I was watching a fight um, of multiple times, super heavyweight world champion, uh, and I was looking the fight and I said, "Man, he's not putting weight." He's, he has the weight, but he's not putting the weight, you know? And I was thinking, man, he's already that good in winning all of that much, you know? You know, of course, he was young. He's still young. And explosive and agile. But when he learns to put his 250 pounds, then it's going to be even another game. And I was looking, my opinion, he wasn't putting the weight right. And then, you know, sometimes heavy guys, they have to work less to get the same what we get by working a lot, you know? So we, you know, not, I'm not happy, so I have to work much harder to pull all my weight while the guy, okay, I don't have my weight and put the weight. So see how people angle, where is the position of the body. The guy have too much, both his knees on the ground. Usually he's not putting the weight enough, you know? How come? If both of your knees on the ground, so you're not putting the weight. Can you put both knees on the ground? Yes. 
But at that point, you understand that you're not heavy. You, you know, you, you know, defensive, you may be waiting for a mistake and you jump. And at that point, the guy on the bottom is also what? Resting, he's gaining energy. Because you're not taking his energy, he's gaining. Like, it's like that video game that you punch, the, the energy goes down, but all of a sudden the energy starts going up again. You have to get the energy all the way to the bottom. And it happens in the fight a lot. In the final energy, like you, you uh, pressure, pressure, pressure. See the guy's energy going. No, no, no. Your energy goes down too, but your energy go like go like this. And when you hear, really good. And then all of a sudden you start to give too much gap, not putting weight, and then the energy of the guy get back here, back here. You know. So you have to bring it down again, and sometimes it passes you, and then you trouble. So that's why you gotta consistently be putting weight. Okay. Um, so that's that. <laughs> that, that's what I think a little bit. All right, guys. So, have any other questions? Otherwise, you can just wrap this thing up. I'm not in a hurry, but I give you two seconds. Ten, nine, eight. Okay. Book. I'm talk about the book. Oh, oh man, this is all book principles. This is a principle. Principle of the weight. All right. Uh, but I can, you know, be more specific. In our book, I have a talk about overreach. You talk about, you know, the other analogies we explain. And one, another day, I can even come back to the analogies again. Uh, the fact that the analogy, some people even bash me because of the analogies. Oh, the book was just, well, why I use analogy? First of all, because I like, it reminds me, when I, when I have a picture of something else, and compare that, you know, it's easy for me to understand. So that's me. I use it because it's how I understand. And, you know, instead of trying to explain, you know, I like, oh, maybe it's like a football, American football. Okay, I like that. You got to go fight by inch by inch. You got to do this. You got to do that. Chess, like chess. For example, the, the part that I, that I talk in the book, let's talk about controlling the center of the board. Uh, I learned in chess that controlling the center of the board is the most important, important part in chess. And then I was already figuring it out that controlling the hips is the most important part in jiu-jitsu. So I say, well, ha guess what? The hips happen to be the center of the board, right? It's like, it's the center of the body, you know? And the chest at the center of the board, I'm like, man, that's the most important part. So it connected, you know, that the idea is the same. And what was the idea? Because in chess, it doesn't matter if the guy got a bunch of your pieces. Well, it matters, but not as much as who controls the center of the board. That's what I, I, I learned. And I'm not like an expert or master chess player, but reading some chess books, I came out, to, I, 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 that's what they said, a bunch of guys said that. And then as I, I'm you know, playing chess, you know, a little, some people, I start doing that, they're like, okay, because why? Positioning, you have the best position, right? So in Jiu-Jitsu, same thing, when you control the hips, you have the best position on the body. Because the guy's hip move, you lose him. Like uh, the example I give uh, is to stack two nails on each side of his hips. He's not going anywhere. He's stuck there forever, you know. But if you put those two nails on other parts of the body, the guy's going to be much, much more annoying than he is if you just put on the hips. Understand? So why is that important? Right? I think, man, why is that important? Because everywhere when I'm on top, even in other position, when I get the back, people's back, I think. When I'm controlling the back, if I'm controlling the hips, if my leg, my knees are squeezing enough to keep the hips and my foot is in the right position, if the guy's hips all loose and you get the back, it's all loose. How many times you see people get in the back and the hips all loose and the guy go put the hip on the ground, get the hip, get out. That was a technical mistake of not focusing on control. It was more focusing or on submission and he lost everything. That's why anaconda, when you lock the anaconda, you lock the guy, now you lock his hips. The guy's in really bad position there in control because his hips are locked, all right? An example, I don't lock an Anaconda much, but it's a good example. Um, and the other thing is on, on top, so what happened? I started thinking, when I pass the guard, I think, man, how can I make sure that the hips are flat while I'm passing around, you know? So I can, the guy cannot follow me and try to put me back in the guard. So. You keep your eye on that thing all the time when I'm passing the guard. So you develop ways. And sometimes I put my forearm on the hip. You know, sometimes I, you know, I put my hand on the hip and it's stiff. 
Sometimes I put my shin there. Or sometimes I put my shoulder there, you know? So I, I start figuring out, okay, what can I put there to keep it flat, you know, in, in every situation? Because that, my focus was control that. So when you start thinking about controlling that, that becomes a priority. And when it becomes a priority, that's all you see, right? Whatever you have in your mind is all you see. You can't think, okay, uh, let's start looking, go out of the, on the street, start looking for red. You know, you're not going to see anything but red. They're going to look red, 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 red. Oh, look at the light. Look at this, the red. You're going to see more red than you've never seen in your whole life. Same as you just, when you focus on one thing, you're going to see that thing more often than anything else. And my, my point was, okay, focus the hip. And guess what? I got good at it doing that. So, you know, it's something that benefited me a lot. And then I don't have to use a lot of energy to do that. It's just angles and knowing what to put in the position, knowing that this thing is always there and take advantage. Okay, so that comes from the chest and putting together two and two. Nobody, tell the truth, nobody did that, said that to me in my whole life. All the guys that are training in St. Paul just focus on controlling it. Nobody said that. People mention I have to catch pieces here and pieces there. You know, oh, the guy mentioned that. Oh, the guy mentioned that. But nobody said that should be a focus, number one. I consider that my focus, number one. You know what I mean? And submission comes as a result of that, you know, because then if I control the guy, I have all the time in the world to get him. If I don't control, I have to rush. If you rush, mm -hmm. you, you know, you usually screw up and you're, you know, you're trying to rush things, you know? And it doesn't matter your age, you know, you can do anything because you now you know what to do. If you try to go fast, sometimes I, mean, I don't have that speed. The guy's going faster than me. Well, you have to work on the other ways, all right? All right, guys. Thank you for coming again. I might give you guys a uh, stay, stay connected and the people in the book too, because again, I'll keep contacting you guys, uh, let you guys in here. Now I know everybody's bored at home, you know, so I do this for my, my school. Obviously I'm not going to give you guys all the time because they, my students, you know, but again, I'll, you know, get you guys in and you guys have a chance to um, do that. Hey, Reese, we didn't test you, right? No. So can you do me a favor? No. <laughs> Can you on Monday log in on the 4:30 class? Yeah. 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 All right. So you do that in the class, okay? Got it? Yes. Yes. All right, but you, you know, you, you, I know you're doing good, so just just to to double check with, you know, basically I'm seeing what you're doing here every day. All right, guys, have a good one. Thank you too much. He's on the background today. Usually he teaches this class too. So Hi guys. I say Guilherme. Uh, and I'll see you guys next week. Oh, Thank you, sir. Tomorrow I won't be doing anything tomorrow, okay? So you know, taking a break. I'm doing every other week. So Thank tomorrow you. is my sleeping all the way until uh, I can. Yeah. <laughs> I right, see you guys Monday. Thank you. All right, guys. Have a good weekend. Everyone.